They call it planking. The new internet craze of planking. How many of you have tried the plank? Planking. The popularity of planking has soared in recent weeks. It involves lying down, face first, flat in a public place. Like a plank of wood. So, this is it. This is where it all began. We're here at Seaview Park in the city of Edmonds in the state of Washington. And this is where planking began, what we called face dancing back in 1983. Yeah, it was 1983 and it was a summer day, kind of like today. And we were just walking in this park. There was a, a whole baseball game going on over here. And there were people behind that backstop watching the game, cheering it on. There was a, a right fielder standing right about here. And for some reason, we just decided to lay face down. Can't remember who was you or me. We can't remember, but yeah. we both laid face down. And we laid there for a while. It must have been 20 minutes, at least two innings of baseball. Teams were exchanging field, and then we just got up. And it was strange because at the time we had been doing things that we said made no sense. Uh, one of the things was called palming someone's head. You palm someone's head while they're talking. They could be in the middle of a sentence and you just palm their head. And we would do it sometimes to newscasters because they're on, on air and they're talking and we'd palm their head. We also did a thing being bored driving, we were 16, we'd go into a convenience store, walk up to the clerk, and ask for four. And he'd say, for what? We need four. Come on, give us four. And then we'd leave, and he'd be completely confused. <laughs> and so when we did this face dancing here, um, the first time we did it, we were lying there, and we thought they were going to probably tell us to leave. We're lying face down on the ground, just out here in right field, and no response. no response whatsoever. And I thought at that moment that we had found something that made absolutely no sense. This was the best up to that point. Yeah. We sure. were on to something. So, so let's uh, show you how it's done. There's absolutely no reason to face dance. Uh, there, there may be some therapeutic kind of things you can get out of it, uh, say like a meditation, but I think generally it's done because it makes no sense, because there is no purpose. Right. Yeah. And that's exactly what we were aiming for, was that kind of response. And the general response I think is mainly confusion, sometimes anger, and sometimes just they're just totally oblivious, like they don't know what to do. Right. We just wanted to make people confused. So we thought, wow, this is great. We are on to something. So we started doing this everywhere. School dances, weddings, city parks, other sporting events, and we found that other people joined in. We'd be face dancing, and then all of a sudden we'd look around, there'd be, you know, four or five other people. And so we found that in large groups it worked really well, especially at dances uh, where everybody is dancing upright in their traditional dancing, and then there we'd be like lying face A couple down. of us would go down for a long time. Next thing you know, there's 40 others joining in. Okay, now the first rule of face dancing is that you have to lie face down. I mean, you can't lie, have your hand, head to the side. Um, you can't be lying on your back. You can't be looking up. Your face has to be, I usually put my face on my forehead. Right, it's the safer safe. position, protects your nose in case someone falls on you. Um, and then another very important um, rule, when you get up, you just act nonchalant like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. You definitely don't want to have your arms out. No, that's that, not a face that's dance. That's not a face dance. This makes no sense. Um, your legs can be um, right together like that, or maybe uh, maybe slightly even apart. slightly apart. Uh, mm -hmm. I usually put the tops of my feet on the ground. Yeah, I like the toes dug, yeah. dug in. That's more of a stylistic thing, I think, mm -hmm. but that's a really good way to do it. And uh, I think it's important that you face dance for longer than is comfortable. And I don't mean uncomfortable to your body. I mean 
you'll see when you do your first face dance, you'll feel like, oh, maybe I should get up, especially if it's in a public venue. And at like, that point, you're about halfway done. Yes. Once you start feeling uncomfortable, you can almost feel the uncomfort of the people permeating the crowd around you. Then you know, okay, I'm only halfway done here. And when you were finished planking, you were finished planking and the planking was, or, or the face dancing was done. So when you were finished face dancing, the event was kind of over. And it wasn't generally photographed because we didn't walk around with cameras in our pockets and we didn't have camera phones. There was no internet. You were not recording things, recording your life continuously unless you were on vacation. vacation. So some of the earliest photos of face dancing is on vacations and in our school yearbook. Thank you, sweetie. So here is our high school yearbook from 1985. And here is the first photograph taken of face, face dancing. So that would be the oldest known planking picture. So for us, face dancing was kind of a local thing. It was never a worldwide phenomenon for us. Uh, until 2007, people started contacting me on Facebook and through the email, they'd send me these pictures of people who were face dancing, and face dancing was some pretty good form, but in very exotic places, sometimes on a tiger, sometimes up high on a bridge, on police cars, and, and I, people said, well, they're face dancing, and it was face dancing. I saw it on a TV show, The Office, I think it was. Kids, don't try planking. It's dangerous. Especially with me around. You know, we didn't have cell phones back in the early days. Um, it was all about the act of doing it. It was a different philosophy. It wasn't trying to outdo one another in exotic locations or out face dancing, out planking the next guy. You didn't was, even take ownership of it, really. Right, you, it was all about the act. Face it was dance. Performance art. And then basically. you'd get up and act as if you never face danced. Right. And that was. It was gone. It was a fleeting moment that existed in time that no longer exists. No pictures, no nothing, just memories. And I, I must say, I applaud these people that are planking. I mean, it's, it's like the next generation has taken what we did and taken it to like another level in, and given it a meaning of their own. Right. But I think it kind of, it has more meaning, I think, for them than what we were trying to achieve, which was no meaning. Right. I grew up shy. I needed a reason to bust out of my shell. And this kind of pushed the boundaries, the limits of absurdness, and it got me out of that shell, I think. You and know? I think that would be the, the legacy that we would want to um, give to the world. Um, don't take yourself so seriously. Right. Have fun, we're not here that long. Do something absurd. Do something that is not doesn't necessarily have a purpose. Exactly.